Hola, chica. Hola. Hola, hola. Please, 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 Erika. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, we should come, we should come closer, yeah? Yes, it feels like a throne. Uh, uh. And let me help you. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. So how, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yes? Yes. How was the talk? Very good. Did you all enjoy the talk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh. Um, so let me share a bit the format for the first five to ten minutes. I'm going to be asking you some questions. Okay. And then you can participate in the Q&A by submitting your questions through the app. Now, if you don't know where the app is, um, I don't know. Uh, if, you, if you have the question where the app is, please submit that question to the app <laughs> and we'll make sure to find it. No, no, no. <laughs> You have either received an email yesterday or it's in the booklet, I think, page 62. You scan the QR code and then you go there. Your questions are anonymous, so after the five to ten minutes, I'm going to choose some of them and I'm going to ask Erica. Um, I was thinking a lot about the Q&A session mm -hmm. and the first question I wanted to ask you is how someone, you know, Wake, wakes up one day and says, I'm going to make porn. I mean, did, did, you, did you saw a strange dream or...? Well, it happens lots of times to lots of people, I guess, because there's many people making porn out there, so it's not only me, obviously. Uh, in my case, I guess it started already back at university when I was a young adult mm -hmm. and I was, you know, investigating my own sexuality and obviously I was watching porn. And watching porn, I had this feeling of kind of mixed feelings. My body did like it. I felt excited by watching it, but at the same time I didn't really like what I was seeing. I didn't like the messages. I didn't like the way they were portraying women. I didn't like the storytelling of it. And I think that back then I was a political uh, science student and I was a lot into analyzing, deconstructing, trying to understand the world we live in and the power balances and all of it. And, and I think that the idea was born already back then, but then I didn't think I was never going to dare to do anything. It was just kind of a, a play, you know, a fantasy somehow. And then in, in, my, in my life, I later on moved down to Barcelona because I'm Swedish. I was born in Stockholm. And I, um, in Barcelona, I needed to find a job. And I started to work in the audiovisual sector at the beginning, you know, as a production assistant, etc. And at the same time, I had always loved cinema. So I took the opportunity to, to get some film classes. And while I was at film school, I had an opportunity to make a short film. And when I sat down and started to think about what kind of film do I want to do, it, uh, all my ideas was around erotism and, and female sexuality. And at first I wasn't sure it, if it was going to be explicit or not, but the more I was thinking about it, I said, why not? Let's try to make something different, but mm. with my values. So it was very, uh, I mean, it was something that just came up in the end. And you just went for it, right? I went for it. I was young and I was daring and I said, why not? Okay, nice. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, my next question is, um, and when, when, I, when I was sharing that I was going to do the Q&A with you, yes. I asked all my friends to ask questions. So the one question I got asked most is, we all consume porn, as you said in the, we do. In the talk. Or most of us. Most of us, most of us. Right, right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, most of maybe us. there's yeah, someone yeah, yeah, yeah. here that never watched it. We don't know. Um, so what's the creative process of, of a movie? From, from the very first step to, to the last one. What's, mm -hmm. what's the process? Well, Focus in my it, case, yeah. it's a long process. Uh, mm -hmm. And it starts with an idea, of course. Uh, I have a great project online called Ex Confessions, where people from all around the world are sending in their ideas, their sex fantasy stories that they have done, or things they want to do, or kinks, or 
situations and I feed from that. I read all these stories and then I come up with ideas to make a film, a short film out of their stories. And this is the work I, I do as a, a script writer and as a director and I also encourage my whole team to do it because it's not only me working for this project but we are many film directors all around the world. We have shot films in Finland or in Colombia or in Australia or we haven't shot in Greece. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know of a wonderful filmmaker out there, uh, a female filmmaker would be great, but if it's someone from the LGBTQIA uh, community, that would also be lovely. Um, and then I start thinking uh, ab about the film, about the characters, and sometimes I even have to ask myself, am I doing something that is representative of what I want to do, or am I myself falling into cliches? Because obviously I am a product of this patriarchal world uh, where I have grown up. And, and sometimes I, 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 I really need to criticize my own work. So even when I create characters, I can look at the male character and the female character and go, what would happen if I would change these two characters? Would the story change or would it not? And nice. sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And then uh, the whole film process starts where I'm working very closely with my team. We have a film crew of many, many women, around 80% of women in my film crew. Nice. And I sit down together when I have a first script with my uh, director of photography, with my art director, etc., and we start talking about how are we gonna make this film reality, right? Uh, and besides that, it's the whole casting project pro process, which mm. is very... How does, it, how does this work? Yeah. This is a long process. Uh, now I am very fortunate because I know many, many adult performers. So I have an easier time to kind of know who I would like to see in a movie. And I already know their personalities and who they are and their sexualities and if they would fit or not. But what I do a lot is to have conversations with them when I find out who they are, what they like, what kind of sexuality they have, and who would they like to perform with. Because in the end, I'm making real films with real sex, and I want the people in my films to feel attracted to each other. Mm. I want there to be that special chemistry. And most of the people they have, uh, their favorite lists of favorite coworkers, uh, so that that is one of the ways. Mm. Awesome. I mean, it's a, it's a whole thing. It's like uh, producing a, a movie from Hollywood. It's the same thing, right? Well, I mean, not the budget well, one. Yes, well, yes, yes. I'm but not, I mean, in I'm terms not, of yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not working with the Hollywood budgets, but I am working with more or less independent cinema budgets. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. And the process yeah. is very similar to any independent uh, movie, really. And I think the whole thing you've done with the cast and how they met each other before. This is why your movies are also so separate from the big, um, the big porn you were mentioning mm -hmm. in, in the talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know you've been successful in, in showcasing the, the female and the LGBTQI perspective. Mm -hmm. And I guess the, um, uh, you know, the engagement from the female um, population is good. Mm -hmm. But what about men? What? Oh, ha, ha. they love it. Men yeah. love everything, you know. Uh, so <laughs> not <laughs> true, not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> we actually have quite a big, um, a big male audience. Uh, around 60% 60, 60 of our subscribers 60. on the on the sites online are men. And uh, I received quite many, many emails from, from men writing to me. Some are saying, hey, Erica, thank you so much. Had the best night ever. My wife never wanted to watch porn with me, but you know, with your film, wow. And then I have some other men kind of being angry at me, saying, hey, Erica, you destroyed the porn for me. I used to love it. I was on, on these tube sites online, and I didn't really read the, the text or think about what they, the values they were sending out, and it was great. And then I saw this interview with you, and now I just go online, and I only see the tiny teen is getting destroyed, and that doesn't go with my values. Now I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> Uh, men like everything? Not true. Not true at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, um, I've already seen some of your questions, so I'm going to go there after that. So please share 
in 30 seconds, what's the, um, the non-for-profit you've created with Pablo, your, your husband, uh, the porn conversation? Mm -hmm. So everyone can understand and then we can go deeper in there. Okay, perfect. Well, the pornconversation.org is a project online to teach parents and educators how to talk about porn. And what we have gathered there are some, we have developed some PDF guides that you can download for different age groups, depending on the age of your children. Uh, and these PDF guides will help you to have these conversations. And if you feel that you don't have the knowledge enough, because maybe your parents never talked to you about sex, or you never had good sex education in school, then there are also curriculum to download. So you can actually learn about sex, so you know what you are telling your children about. Awesome. Thank you very much. Lots of interesting questions. Thank you, guys. Keep on writing. Um, Are they good I'm, questions? I'm reading, I'm reading the question. I'm reading the question. So I, I'm going to go to the porn conversation. So I'm a high school teacher, and we have used some of your very good porn conversation resources with some older classes. Have you, uh, have you have any plans to produce a video that is suitable for a classroom that can mm -hmm. help teachers who might not feel comfortable about mm -hmm. addressing the, the subject? Yes, that is a very good question. And we are actually producing a few animated videos uh, so they can help to explain some of these subjects. But I know that this idea of, of how do I do it if I don't feel comfortable, that is also something that, that goes for lots of parents that ask me, you know, is there any other way I can do this with my kids? And, and honestly, I mean, I think the best way would have would be to dare to have the conversation. But if you don't dare to do it verbally, start technologically. Mm. Send them a link to an article that you have read, or, or even send them a, a, maybe a, a letter, an email that you write with your opinions. That could start a conversation. So um, at what age should we start talking to, to our children about porn? Uh, we should start early, because Porn starts early with them. You know, we have given technology to our kids from a very, very early age. And what we see when we look at statistics is that uh, kids from 12, most of them have watched porn, but many kids already at eight, at eight years old are starting to maybe not watch it, but to you know, to, to they are looking up something on the internet, for example. Maybe they are even Googling something regarding Harry Potter and his wand. And suddenly, they end up on a porn site, you know? And some other kids are left, because this is the way porn works, you know? Porn is all over. There's a porn about any subject that is out there. And, and many kids, they stumble upon it. I mean, uh, I'm 28, I think everyone who is... Um, do we have parents here? Can you clap? Clap if you're parents. <laughs> so, um, your kids have access to mobile phones, and uh, even if we try to, to hide it, I mean, they're going to... Control their devices, which is very, very difficult. And, and I mean, even if we, we, we manage to control their devices, what happens when your kid goes to, to their, you know, friend. their friend's home? Well, they're going to be able to see what you didn't want to talk about. I mean, this is the reality we live in now. Porn, you know, has become sex education, whether we like it or not. So I think that the only strategy we have here is to talk to them about it, to prepare them for it, the same way that we are preparing our kids for other situations in life, right? I wouldn't send my, my daughters to a bar or a club or a discotheque without talking to them about alcohol, cigarettes, drugs, etc. The same happens with the internet and with porn. You know, you are giving them technology, prepare them for what they will find on the internet. Mm -hmm. As I said in the talk, porn is sometimes one third of all internet traffic. This is big, this is mass media. This is not some kind of little category that just some men are watching during late hours at night. No, it has a huge influence in our society, and we need to address that. So wh what are the characteristics of, of a more acceptable uh, porn film? 
Well, uh, consent would be one of the first things that I think is really, really important that okay. you can actually see how com consent is, is a practice, how it's used, how people are talking to each other and communicating about sex. Mm -hmm. But then it's respectful, general respectful standards, you know. Uh, I think that, that it's important to portray people the way they deserve to be portrayed, not as a category on a tube site where you know they are categorizing us depending on our body types or on our age group I mean there's milfs and there's teens and there's you know ethnicities there's uh, or race you know uh, Asian and Latina and ebony and 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 etc and I think that this whole idea of kind of, of the fetishization of people that that is something we need to leave behind. We need to humanize people. Imagine, for example, if on Netflix you would have these categories. I mean, people would go nuts. They would go uh, screaming all over the internet saying, this is not the way of treating people. But sometimes it feels to me that in the porn world, we have kind of accepted that this, mm. this systemic, uh, misogynistic uh, way of treating women, for example, that that's accepted in our world. It's not accepted in our general society anymore, right? Uh, I mean, I, I, get, I get the point. At the same time, so is there, and I'm getting a question yeah. from here, is there um, good porn and bad porn? Well, that's a tough question and a difficult question because it would be very easy to categorize it that way, right? But at the same time, <laughs> there's a whole industry and many people in that industry is working both in what we call mainstream porn and in more independent porn. Mm -hmm. My hope for the future is that we will see how the category independent porn feminist porn, ethical porn, alternative porn, etc., will grow and will become bigger and bigger. But at this moment, the porn for most people is the tube sites online. But, but your opinion is that we should um, delete the whole tube thing or have, have them both in, in the balance or how, how is the, the perfect a perfect porn industry for you? Well, I think that when it comes to the tube sites, what I would like to see is them being behind a payment barrier. I think that the problem, the biggest problem we have there is that so many people who are under 18 have access to mm. these sites today. They are just one click away. And if we would implement a pay system, where you need to have a credit card, then you would show somehow that at least you are 18 to be able to access that content. Yeah, that, that makes sense, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, okay, so next question from here. Uh, give me a second, because I lost it. Sorry. Ah, yeah. So, uh, given the dominant market share of, of big porn, how do you promote, I'm gonna go to you, some were totally different directions, so, but how do you promote the new gen, uh, gender of uh, movies that you, that you produce? Uh, well, uh, that's tough because it's very difficult to promote uh, adult cinema in general because we are not allowed to use so many of the of the ways that people the are tools, marketing yeah. themselves, the tools on the internet, you know, Google Words, etc., etc. We are not allowed there. So uh, the way that we have grown as a company is really word to mouth. It's kind of people watching the films and spreading the message. Uh, yeah. And me going to places, showing up, showing face. Uh, and telling people about what is going on, you know, I'm trying to go to film festivals, I'm trying to go to events, I'm invited to universities to speak, etc. Mm. Uh, now, what you're doing, um, would you say, I think it's kind of activistic, right, would you agree? It has a, an element of activism, right? Absolutely. At the same time, you're running a company, you're 50 yes. people now? We oh. are 50 people 50 in people Barcelona. Now. Awesome. And uh, which means mm -hmm. you're going for, for profit because you run a business. Yes. So my question is, where's the balance between creating something for, for good for, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. while having a good impact 
and at the same time you're making a profit. So is there a balance there? And what's the balance? Well, I think that uh, activism needs uh, funds, needs money. We need to be able to make these films. These films that I'm making, they are costing quite a lot of money. Uh, so uh, if I really want to make a change, the only way of, of for me seeing that possible is mm -hmm. through subscriptions. And I think that, that many people used to ask me about pornography and why, why they have to pay for it. Because as, as we have been talking today, there's so much of it for free on the internet. But think about it, if you are a consumer of porn, uh, you are part of the porn industry. And if you are going to the tube sets for free, you are voting for them and their values with your time and your traffic. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I have, a qu I have a, um, two questions here. The first, somewhere in here, is like, um, you studied political sciences. Mm -hmm. Is porn political? Porn is political, absolutely. How so? How so? Because the message that you are sending out through porn is political. It's about power balance. Porn mm. is a discourse about sexuality, about gender roles, about the way we play sexually. And I want to have a voice in that discourse. Thank you, Erika. Um, another question. So, I'm going to read it. Recent sexual related crimes in Greece are seemingly related to man, man superiority as portrayed in mainstream porn and dictated by religious mm -hmm. uh, beliefs. Yes. So what's your input on the correlation between, uh, I'm missing now the English word, but uh, male man superiority crimes? You, you get May. Ma can you help me with that, the English word? Gynecoctonies. <laughs> uh. um, From, from men, from men, from yes. their husbands or, or partners. Yes, or, yes. So if, 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 there's, how, if you believe there's correlation between... How porn is related to yeah, violence yeah, yeah. towards women in our society. Well, you know, when it comes to porn and society, um, I think that, that they, are both, uh, they are both affecting each other. I think that porn is a mirror of our society, that, that all these values that we are criticizing, that they are values that we have in our society, that's why they are playing out in porn. But at the same time, obviously, as we have said, porn is mass media and porn is sending out messages, and especially to young people, many young people who haven't have even had sex in their own lives, when they watch that kind of porn online, what they do is that they go to their own lives and they reproduce what they have learned from the internet. So uh, thinking about that, I do think that it's a problem when so much of porn is showing situations where it's about punish fucking women, where it's about nailing, banging, smashing and choking women. I think that, that those values uh, should, uh, should these, these acts should be things that should happen in a, a controlled situation Safe. of BD, BDSM, where you know we, we, we know the rules for what is going on, and we know that the submissive person that it's something that they want in those circumstances. Thank you very I think much. that society has a lot to learn from the kink communities. Thank you very much for that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Next question from here again. Um, and yet the most restrictive, repressive, anti-porn societies and communi communities are often the most misogynistic and pat patriarchal. So, any comments on that? No, we, I, I think that what we need is a change. We need to bring more women, more LGBTQI plus people, more BIPOC folks into the world of pornography and start seeing their stories, their ideas, their visions 
of sex. I think that that is, is that there's power there. There's power of stepping into this space, to dare with this space, and to start telling other stories. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I want to get you to, to this question, uh, which I also had thought about it. So there, there is also the porn addiction. Mm -hmm. There is this huge, huge thing which is called porn addiction, and it affects lots, lots, lots of people, mm -hmm. especially younger people and lots of male mm -hmm. uh, people. What's, what's your opinion on that, and how, how someone can, like, I don't know, no control, forget it. What's your opinion on, on the whole porn addiction thing? Well, I, I, I think that many people are watching porn in a not mindful way. It's not really about their sexual experience with themselves. They're not really taking the time to enjoy that moment, moment, but they are instead using it to quiet their anxiety somehow, opening up window after window after window, looking for more and more and more impacts. And in the end, it ends up a little like being something like eating potato chips or eating bad food or kind of more and more and more. Uh, but it's, it's not really about their experience. Uh, but I think that we live in a society with lots of addictions. It's not only porn. I mean, we are addicted to so many things. Uh, and I think we really have to be careful with the way we are managing mm. our sexuality. We have to respect our own sexuality. I, I mean, it's the same with uh, social media. We're all... Addicted? Most of us uh, addicted to, uh, to social media. How many times did you look at it today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even yeah. in the last 10 minutes, I don't know. But um, so mm. we were all addicted to social media and we know mm. that we can't just ban social media from our children because mm -hmm. it's okay, they're going to go to their friends, but we can talk to them we and we go, we're going them. back to, to the porn conversation. So how do you talk to my teenage son who I don't want him to be, you know, become this male in a bad way figure. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you uh, talk to him to empower him regarding his mm -hmm. sex, his sexuality, mm -hmm. and a possible, in a bad way, a porn addiction? How yeah. would you talk to him? Uh, well, uh, it's about helping them, of course, to construct knowledge around sex, but also helping them to empathize with other people. So I think that the importance there is for them not to, not to see women as tools for their sexuality and for their pleasure, but understand that uh, they are people, there are uh, people with their own needs and their own sexuality. Mm. Um, but, but, but of course, it's, it's always kind of going to be complicated to have another person understanding how to respect other, other people. And I think that cinema here could be a great tool because uh, cinema gives us this opportunity to empathize with other people outside ourselves, to understand other people and their situations and their sexualities. And this is also something that I have seen talking about, you know, heterosexual men and how, how they react to my films. And, and it's also important to say that obviously not all of my films are heterosexual, but they show a lot of, of, of the spectrum of different sexual orientations. And I received uh, feedback from many heterosexual men saying that they had never thought about watching a gay film between two men, but then suddenly they watched this short film that popped up on, on, on our site and they liked it. They thought it was beautiful and they connected in a new way. Mm. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, just, I get the point. <laughs> I'm gonna go. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. That's very. I'm gonna go to yeah. different directions because. But this is what we we have seen with cinema, right? That maybe you don't you know connect. that much yeah, about yeah, yeah. about a different country or a different people or a different way of living, and then you watch a film, mm. and suddenly you start feeling like you're getting closer, like you're understanding. To the character. I mean, in the end, I think a lot is about empathy. It's about understanding other people and understanding that you are not the, the most, you know, the, the center of the world.
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes. Okay. Now, in the talk, you, um, you shared about your daughters and how you empowered them about um, um, porn and their sexualities and sex and how that affected in a positive way um, how, how they were raised and how they, they managed to, to handle tough situations mm -hmm. with their classmates and so on. If, um, if one of your daughters later in life came to you and said, OK, uh, Mom, mm -hmm. I thought about it. I'd like to be a performer in one of your movies. Mm -hmm. How would you approach that? Mm -hmm. Well, I would approach it like I do with any other young person approaching me wanting to be in a movie. Uh, they, I, ha I have a lot of questions for them because I need to understand who they are and why they want to do it mm -hmm. and, and that they, I need to, to give them the information about the industry because obviously the porn industry is a, a difficult industry to navigate. Maybe not that different from other industries. I mean, if I would have a daughter saying, hey, I want to be a fashion model, I would also go like, whoa, we need to sit down, we need to talk about this, and I need to tell you a lot about how this world is working, right? But I think that when it comes to porn, it's very important to understand that you need to do it for the, the right reasons. You shouldn't, you shouldn't perform in a porn movie if you are in a situation that you want to earn a little money quickly and you feel stressed and, and you think this might be the only way of, of getting there. No, you need to really think about this because if you are gonna have sex naked on the internet, those images are gonna stay there forever and you need to be strong and you need to be prepared for what that means in your life. Because still today, there's a huge stigma, especially for performers, but for all people who are working with something sex-related. And it's important to understand that. So when I have a young uh, performer uh, or an actress sitting down with me, I always ask them, have you told your mother? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for answering that. Um, last question, last question, because we, the time is up. What's, what's your, your big goal? Uh, what's your, you know, the 10, 15 year from now goal? What's your vision? My vision is to change sex culture uh, in the long run. It's really to bring in more voices and to start seeing that this little crumble that today is independent porn cinema will grow and become bigger and have a bigger influence on the whole mainstream porn that's out there. Erika. Thank you very much. Please, Erika, last.